So I've just turned up to the property. As you can see, looking nice and smart. I've got all my PPE. I've got my ID badge with my gas certification on it. It's got my photo on it, my ID, and it's also got the validity time. And I've got my company logo, which was stuck to the vehicle. So you can see, fully professional, so the customer knows what type of engineer they're getting. Beginning the job, I've got all my tools ready. I've got my brush, my vacuum, Spanners, obviously when you're working on boilers, they prefer spanners so you don't damage any nuts or any materials because if you, if you use grips, obviously the teeth and the grips could damage all the brass components. So I've got my spanners handy. I've got an inspection mirror so I can inspect all the inadequate places, check for leakage, signs of CO. LDF spray, which you have to use. Obviously you spray this on the fitting and if it leaks, it bubbles. You have to use this because it's non-corrosive. So you can spray it on the gas appliance and it won't corrode the rubber or the metal. Have an inspection torch. I've got a marker pen, so I can always mark on the appliance the work I've done. Okay, uh, as you can see on this appliance, uh, five years ago it had inhibitor put in. Fernox inhibitor. I've got my U-gauge. Uh, this is a water gauge, you work in millibar. Um, later on I shall be doing a tightness test. Uh, I'll be doing a, a let by for 10 millibar at one minute, then I'll be doing a step temperature stabilisation at 20 millibar for one minute, and then I'll be doing a two minute tightness test. Okay. I've got some gas tap grease for any appliances. And as I recommend to all the other engineers, I've got a little container, so when I take screws off the appliance, I can neatly put them to one side so I don't lose them. So on viewing the appliance, always have a good look, good, good look around for any signs of corrosion, uh, CO2 stains from the flue, check the integrity of the appliance and the flue system, and ask the, the, the client if they've got any issues regarding the usage, the performance and the noises. Okay. So as I begin, I'm just going to take off Cover. As you can see this appliance, I've serviced it last year, you can see my name, my surname and when I serviced it. Okay. I always like to do that because it just confirms that I did a professional job. Um, any, de any of the details I might put down, uh, fit a new component, I might put, put down the ratio reading this year. And I have a quick look around the appliance, just to look for signs of any leakage. The wiring is heat flex, and on this appliance it's got to have a 3 amp fuse. It's vital this appliance has a 3 amp fuse. If you're working on any of these expensive components or the PCB and there's an error, you want to blow the fuse rather than the component. Inside here, inside this PCB, you'll find an internal fuse of 2 amp. Sometimes they are 1 amp, but on this is a 2 amp, and this is a fast burn, which means the blade of the actual fuse is thin so it will blow straight away. You've got the pump, diverter valve with a micro switch and all these components need, need to be visually checked. Above the pump you've got an automatic air vent to release air from the heating system. I always recommend that you check that it's open and you check it's not leaking. And as you can see this boiler is extremely clean. I'll give it a, a small brush around. All the cables look clean. Always check those spades are nice and secure. And then just give us a slight back up. You have a sight tube as well, a sight gauge. That's to see the flame. So from that you can see if it's working, you can see the colour of the flame, if it's yellow, you know there's a lack of oxygen there and there's a serious, serious need of attention. So now I'm going to start taking the cover off. Now 
This appliance has been installed in a compartment, however, the instruction state no ventilation is needed at the top or at the bottom. So I'm going to take the casing off now, looking inside the appliance. Always inspect in, inside the appliance. As you can see, this is slightly dirty, I'll give that a clean. And around inside the combustion chamber casing is a seal. This seal should be in a good condition to contain all the gases for the air intake and for the combustion. Okay. So now we've got the casing open, you can see the fan where it removes the products of combustion. Always check that's clean and check the integrity of the flue. Check all the seals are okay, check it's nice and secure because what people must appreciate is the air intake must not be mixed with the products of combustion else it will give a poor flame reading. Always check the fan pipes, pressure pipes. If these are blocked or kinked the boiler will, will not work. The fan has a safety device called the pressure switch. When the fan is working, it blows pressure down the tubes, which moves the micro switch across, in turn firing the boiler up. So now we're going to take the internal combustion chamber up, door off, so we can inspect. So we can inspect the burners. On modern boilers, when inspecting the burners, you have to install new O-rings and boiler seals. What I'm looking for now is corrosion, burner warping or burner rust, and I'm also checking the flame rectification. And the rectification is where the ignition system, the safety device system, converts DC, sorry, AC to DC. So now you can see inside the boiler appliance, the burners do seem quite good, quite clean. There's a little bit of lime scale from the uh, heat exchanger, which we'll clean up now. So I can check the condition of the fins. They all seem pretty clear. There is, however, some staining the top right here with some lime scale so I'll probably just give that a clean just to prevent any sooting or any further blockage. On the side of the appliance is some insulation pads. These are to absorb the heat and protect the appliance because obviously it's very close to the burners. The structure of these and the condition of these must always be inspected. If this insulation pad was to damage, corrode or fall off on the burner it would cause a health issue, health and safety issue. The burners ignite using the electrode. Always clean them and check the gap between the burner top and the electrode. And if you follow them down, just here, you can see the electrode ignition generator. Always check the condition of these cables because if they're damaged, kinked or torn, it'll lose the electric and it'll spark on the appliance or somewhere else 
rather than at the at the boiler. So now I'm just going to brush inside and sweep inside the appliance. As you can see, I've just removed quite a few items of dirt. So I'm extremely happy with the appliance inside. There's no water stains. The insulation pads are in good condition. The heat exchange is nice and clean. The burners are all correct. They're all aligned neatly. The ignition is fine. Here you have the ignition. You can sense that, you can tell it's the ignition because you've got the generator here. And just here, you have the flame sensing electrode. So it ignites the gas here and the spark gets conducted through the gas flame, across the flames, and then the electric collects the current here and converts it to a DC into the PCB. So the flame sensing device here is rectification, converting the DC, sorry, connecting the AC to the DC. To work with modern appliances in this day and age, you have to be extremely good with a multimeter. So you can check earth continuity, check clarity, you can check the connections between the live and the neutral. With a, with a multimeter as well, you can do the resistance reading on components.
When fault finding on these appliances, always follow the manufacturing instructions. You can use a flow chart, you can use a technical helpline. Also, what you can do is, like I mentioned before, the resistance reading. For the flame sensing electrode here, you can do a microamps test. So the microamps test and the instructions for this, so there should be one microamp reading. Whenever you start these appliances up, maybe if they haven't been used all summer, you can always try freeing the pump by removing that slot, putting your screwdriver in and turning it around. With these, there's a thermo thermistors. They can read anything from 2000K to 10,000, whether they're hot or cold. You can sometimes take them out and clean them. They can always leak where they go into the pipe work. That's something else you can look, look out for. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is put this casing back on so I can do a CPA1 test.